Hello, now and future cultists. It is I, your host, Colin Terrio, Pontifex Maximus of the Cult of Copy Facebook group, among other things. This is uh, just outside my office here in lovely uh, scenic downtown Roswell, Georgia. Just about to walk over to the taco place and get some lunch before my webinar with my good buddy, Mike Heath. And uh, as I promised earlier on today's episode of Eat Me, we will be talking about uh, four little elements to making anything you have to tell your audience so much more fascinating and intriguing to them. Uh, if you saw the uh, post that led to this video where I talked about an altercation in the coffee shop this morning with a stranger who was Skyping loudly about his business, and I had an argument with him. As fake. I made that up. I was at the coffee shop today, and there was, there was indeed a number of people loudly Skyping or Facebooking or doing whatever, uh, but that's what gave me the idea for that little scenario. Uh, also, I do the same thing here every day with these videos weaving in these four factors uh, to make them just a little bit more interesting. So it's not a piece of information. It becomes a story. Why a story? Stories are easier to remember. They are uh, more entertaining, so you'll pay closer attention. And uh, you, they are also, excuse me, they are also easier to repeat to other people if something is delivered to them in story format. Why? I don't know. It just is. I read that somewhere once, and I'm repeating it to you now. So what are these four factors that you can add to any piece of information and turn it into a story? Stories need four things to be a story. Number one, it needs characters like me, Reverend Dr. Sir Colin DiTerio. <laughs> um, uh, the characters need to be in a place at a time, like my office here in lovely downtown Roswell or the coffee shop this morning. Where does the action take place? That's the setting. Um, where and when, rather. Uh, the third thing a story needs to become a story is uh, conflict. Conflict is what creates the tension that the reader or watcher needs resolved. Uh, needing to understand how that conflict uh, plays out and completes itself or doesn't, whatever the case may be, that is the curiosity that makes people want to pay attention to stories and it makes people involved in them and want to see what comes next. Uh, my suspicion as to why that is, why people are drawn to conflict and drama, I think it's biological, right? So we're, we're still proto-human animals at some time in the ancient past and uh, conflict, danger, things that may harm us or affect us in a negative way are happening near us, it immediately draws our attention and we need to see how it plays out to decide whether we need to help or stay put or run away or any number of other things. Uh, that is why I believe conflict is something that immediately grabs our attention and what's great about it is, as I demonstrated, you can just make one up and add it to a story and that keeps people interested because now all of a sudden, instead of that piece of information just standing alone, it is part of an ongoing conflict that they need to see the, res the resolution of. I'm jumping the gun a bit because that's number four. Resolution is the fourth thing that you need to have a story. Now, resolution does not have to be like a moral. It doesn't have to end nicely. It just needs to be the end of the scenario in order for it to make sense to the reader and give them a sense of satisfaction. Uh, so with the coffee shop scenario that I painted, I left the resolution as a promise of what was going to be delivered in the video. Uh, that is your basic story attention grabbing hook, right? I've set up the characters, the conflict, the setting, and to get the resolution, you need to do what I'm asking you to do. That's how you use these stories to drive uh, behavior. Um, alternately, and I recommend it, the way you can uh, use this desire to see conflicts resolved on an ongoing basis 
uh, to keep an audience coming back again and again is to do what serial media has done for, you know, hundreds of years, I guess. Uh, soap operas, comic books, uh, TV shows, any kind of serial media that has a vested interest in you coming back for more at a certain time and place. The way you set that up is you start a conflict that won't resolve until they tune in for the next episode at the same time wrapping up a conflict from previous episodes so that it feels satisfying on an ongoing basis. Uh, hopefully I have demonstrated just how easy that is to do, but if not, why don't you ask a question and I'll answer it in the next episode of Eat Me, which will be weekdays. I mean, it's going to be tomorrow, but all future episodes are weekdays at 12 p.m. Eastern right here on the Cult of Copy PR channel. Uh, join me tomorrow for another bite-sized episode of Marketing Goodness. I've been Colin Terrio from the Cult of Copy, and I will see you tomorrow. Thanks for watching. Oh, you should click like follow or subscribe or something. Click like on the page, and then that way you don't even have to remember to come at noon. It'll just tell you when I'm making a new video. Thank you, and bye.